Okay, let's talk about the general guideline that you can use for determining what to play when you don't have music in front of you, which is basically all the other instruments in the group other than the mother drums, which are the only people who have music. And they should actually be memorizing their parts. So the timekeepers, the child drum, the low tom drum, they're all using guidelines. And these are some of the general guidelines. You want to go from the simplest thing you can do to the more complex. Start out with simple <clears throat> that um, strengthens the beat and the pulse of the music. And you can always go to these simpler rhythms in order to solidify the time in the group. If you feel like time is shaky or it's getting too muddy, always go to a simpler part. If you feel like the band needs to find the downbeat in the music, go to the downbeat. Play it. Strengthen it. Uh, so you're always listening to what the group needs and adjusting your part so that it benefits them. So you have the beat one, two, three, four, and you can always play that to help solidify the time, nail down the tempo, get everybody synchronized together. Then you can play the downbeat, play that louder or just it to help everybody find the beginning of the measure <clears throat> or the beginning of a two bar phrase or four bar phrase. Bring this out. You can bring out the one and three so that you have a two pulse feel if you want to get this rocking back and forth feeling. You can bring that out. You can bring out just the three if you want to get like a samba feel or a reggae feel. It puts a lot of emphasis here. You could, on some instruments, you could be playing the two and the four, which is the backbeats, on a high-pitched instrument to help the people feel where they're supposed to clap. And so you can put it there on the two and the four. The backbeats, that's where you go back or to the left to play a part. So... It's all what you feel is missing in the music. You're always listening for that. If you want to create a sense of momentum or motion, you can play the eighth notes. And this is common on shakers, uh, tambourines. Yeah, pretty much. And this will help push the band forward. It gives a sense that you're going faster, but Really, you're not. You're not supposed to be. The numbers are in the same place. The tempo's the same, but because there's more notes, it gives the illusion that it's going faster. So it's used a lot of times when you want to build up towards the end of a phrase. So a shaker might play one, two, three, and four in um, to build up towards the end of the measure, or if it was a two-measure phrase, this would be in the second measure, and this is at the end of that two-bar phrase. You can do something like this, one, two, three, four, and one. So four and one kind of sets up the one, so it's a setup. It's leading you, it's a mini buildup, leading you to the one. So this is what you can do to add a little more density or thickness to the uh, texture of the music. More notes. Uh, the other thing you can do is learn how to play on the ands, the offbeats. This, if you just play the ands, creates, and if they're loud, creates a very upbeat feeling. Upbeat is like a person is walking and they're stepping on the beats and they're lifting up on the ands between the beats, so it gives them a spring in their step. And so we say that person has a real upbeat step. 
There, it's lively. It gives a liveliness to it. You have to be careful about playing all ands <clears throat> for any length of time because if they're too loud, people may think it's the beat that got shifted over in time somehow, and it can really throw them off. So again, you might want to do this at the end of a measure or at the end of every two measures or the end of a phrase because it's complex. It creates a sense of of buildup, a buildup of tension because there's something wrong, there's something different that doesn't feel right and it's that jerkiness. So you might go one, two, eh, eh. So you think the three, you think the four and you play on the offbeat. One, two, three, eh, eh. One, two, three, eh, eh. One, two, three, eh, eh. So this creates a buildup of tension, not just of notes, more notes, but of syncopation. Syncopation means playing off the beat. So you can always do that. 